Now, next, I want to talk about the smart tool. But first, I want to go back to the selector tool. There's one thing. There aren't many options here to select a region. This piece you want, that piece you want, you select it, you got it. You leave your option with it. You can copy, paste, or whatever. I can go, for example, and I copy that piece. Then I want to say put it here. Then I want to say paste that piece. I paste it there, and that little section's right there again. I can press undo, of course, and we undo what we just did. That's pretty simple, right? Now, this is a tool that I love to use. I said earlier through this whole lesson program is my smart tool. The smart tool is three tools in one. An amazing thing. Now, check this out. We can change this to be our TCE, and it's still part of the smart tool. We can make a looper here, and it's still part of the smart tool. We can go back to this and make this trim part of the smart tool back to being standard again. And we can make the other end of this tool, which is the grabber. It can be time. Um, we can also do a separation with the grabber. And we can also do an object, grabbing objects, certain regions here and there, or MIDI notes and moving them all at once in our editing. And the unique thing is you can use all three at the same time. And it's called the smart tool. Because it's so smart, you can do anything you want to do with it. So I'll do some sort of uh, little tricks here. Let's see, I got a smart tool here. Now, for example, that grabs it in time. I can move that region anywhere. And here, I've got a separator here, so I can go to here. And it, see, it becomes this little scissor thing. I can click on this and then go somewhere else in a region, grab the selector here, put it there, and then I can paste that part. Just uh, use the little separated there and I can paste it right in right there see I can undo that now I can make it a smart tool this is even better I can say I want to cut this region out I go to the bottom and it becomes the separator so you click on it and it highlights the area that I just had I can take it and drag it someplace else I just cut it out of there that's pretty cool right let's undo that and that's using all three tools here. So I can take it and shrink it back down or whatever. Or I can say, here, I want to do this. And I grab that. Yep. We'll grab this and cut this out and move it over here. Let's see, just grab it and move it, right? But if I do this, and let's say I go to here and paste it. It doesn't paste it. It's the last thing that was in the paste copy menu. So remember that. But what I can do, though, is I can get the selector tool, I can go to here, select that region there, and then cut it out, and then, man, if I can do this, I can probably take it and move it here and paste it. You think so? Nope. So the same thing. See that? So you have to actually cut it out. So go to here, we grab that region we want, we get the little selector tool, we move down, becomes the cutter, and we cut it out like that. So be aware how you can use your smart tool. I can also do this thing I can say here, go to my grabber here and change the grabber. I want the grabber to become this um, object grabber. So I'm going to grab more than one object. Uh, click on here and you'll notice there's a yellow outline of the region that I'm going to grab. I'll hold on the shift button. I'll click here. It grabs that too. Here too. And grab that too and grab this. Now you might be grabbing, let's say, um, a verse chorus bridge or some drum parts. A kick drum part you want to repeat again in the 27th measure or something. Well, it's a great way to grab them all at once. You take it and then I can grab and move them if I want to. See they're moving right there? See I'm moving? I'm moving them. Or I can just go up here and press copy or press command C and I'm copying. And my selector tool comes out right here on top. Make sure I'm in my smart tool here on top. And I could paste them right there. Let's shrink this down a little bit. And you can see it. Now undo that. Undone. And so using the smart tool here, I can select here, for example, objects and go to smart tool. As you can see here, we can't do that. All we can do, we can do fades. Now watch this here. We're going to go to here. And I'm going to expand a little bit. Now, the Smart 2 gives you the following capacities. And what you can do is that you have uh, the ability.
to actually make these fade files, which is right, really cool here. Want to see this here? I can go to here and do a fade file. That's so cool. Now let me, bam, look at that. It fades out. Now I can take this fade file and extend it somewhat. Let's say I want to extend it to there, and that fade file extends even further. I can go here and extend it. So I can pay from there. Let's pay from right here. And, ooh, that's kind of funky. Go back to here. Cut it off. Now, let's expand it a little bit. There we go. That's better. I want to undo, undo, undo. And right here, we're back in the file. Now, here at the bottom corner, see, I can do this here. I got this fade thing going on. And here on top, I got this other fade thing. So I can do a cross fade here. I can do a fade out here. And at the top, I can do a fade in. And at the bottom, there's no cross fade, just a trim. Nothing's there. So, for example, let's see. I've got these tracks here. And let's say I've got another track behind this one here. Let's go down here and shrink it down a little bit more. And we got this one here. And I may want to take this one and move it up to here, let's say. I'll go to grid mode and make it easier for me. And I'm here in grid mode. And I'll move it right there. And I might even want to move it on top of it. See this? I moved it right on top of it. That's crazy. We don't want to do that. I'm going to slip mode here. And I'll grab it. And I'll move it to move it right, right on top of that like that, maybe. Huh? Nah. Move it close to here. Go back to grid mode. And here, at the bottom, see that's a crossfade. Let's make it a little wider here. we got a crossfade going here. I click on there. I give me a crossfade. Now I click here. We get a cross fade going right there. We get a fade in, a fade out. See that? And that's how you do that. You can fade them in. Now, right here, I can go back to here and go here. It built some sort of cross fade there. I can look at it a little wider here. And take this fade. Let's get it out here. Let's pull it out there. I can't go for it. See that? Let me do it. So I'm locked to the grid. So be aware where you are. Go back to slip mode, and now I can go back all the way to here, we'll say, and my fade is longer. We'll go back to here. Let it fade out real cool, like, like go here and it's like, see that? That's real cool. And go back, let's see, let's shrink it down some more and make the fade even longer. Like in the middle of the track, this is kind of funky. Go back to top. So we can make a cross fade anywhere in the track. See that? That's just a fade out, actually. It's no big deal. If I got two reasons that like that sometimes, I might want to say, well, look, I got these reasons on top, too. Let's play it back. That's crazy. Let's move it back to here. Let's get it where it's like meets it a little bit more, like right about there, maybe. And go to here and just play it. Ooh, that's a little off, but we got the idea. So here, for example, we've got this thing here. I want to crossfade them. Hey, we made a crossfade. Look at this. Now let's open it up and look at it closer. And there's a crossfade. See the crossfade right there? And I can stretch it out a little more on this side and a little more on that side. And now we got a deeper crossfade. Now we're gonna go to here and we're gonna play it back from right here again, right there, and play it back. And from the top. So it's a crossfade. And I can go to here again. We're gonna look at it a little closely. A little more closely here, and there it is right there. Even further, and go back to here. And see, I can place this section right here. See? So it crossfades between the two. Now, if one track was smaller than the other, or louder than the other, you would hear a drastic difference. But the purpose here is to make sure that these tracks crossfade and have a great feel to them, if you're going to do that. It works well for vocals or for using bass lines or whatever, even picking guitar parts. The idea is to be able to crossfade, and the smart tool allows you to do this.